Hey folks, this is A Cat with Charts for SharkCharts.live, and today I'm here to talk to you about ACAT. Uh, ACAT is a backronym for Adaptive Comprehensive Average Tracker, or if you prefer, Adaptive Combined Average Tracker. It really doesn't matter. The point was I wanted to name the indicator after myself, and everybody just calls it ACAT. Uh, so this is sort of uh, a combination of almost a year's worth of work. Uh, it has two main pieces, mean reversion moving average and compression moving average, that started their lives as individual indicators. Uh, if you're familiar with the early history of shark charts, uh, we launched with mean reversion moving average and not long after introduced compression moving average. And then as I found a way to integrate them together and do higher period lengths and without uh, it timing out as often uh, in the way I recoded it, uh, it became realistic to put them all into one indicator. So we deprecated the individual indicators uh, in favor of the combined version. So what we have here is an all-in-one framework for automatically generating volatility pivots. This does the kind of thing that you could do yourself manually with 3D Wave PM uh, more or less automatically. There are some caveats that I'm going to go over in the various videos in this mini series, uh, so stay tuned. But the lion's share of what you would get out of 3D Wave PM, this does it and it does it automatically on uh, more period lengths uh, than even the high-res versions we have of 3D Wave PM. In practice, you would flag a chart to unusability uh, plotting 3D Wave PM before you would get to the precision that we can do with an automatic algorithm. Uh, ACAT very much exists at PineScript's limits, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, if Pine were ever to allow me to just use a lot more variables, uh, or lists of variables, arrays of variables, uh, or just had fewer problems with custom loops, uh, it could actually do a lot to make it much faster running and more precise than it is. I, uh, I try to make this in a normal programming language. Uh, I can make it run faster than uh, I can in PineScript on Trading View. Uh, instead, we're forced into some kludges and compromises. Um, notably on this chart, you can see that I've actually got three different indicators plotted that are looking at three different sets of period lengths. Uh, so a lot of what ACAT has to do in the background is uh, operate in such a way that these can be woven together mostly seamlessly. Um, and there are some settings to help you do that. Uh, getting the, the labels introduced in PineScript version 4 to interweave uh, with this many indicators is a bit of a challenge and and was probably almost impossible to make perfect given uh, the first pass and the label code that they put out. Uh, but I think at this point, the overall indicator is pretty mature, and uh, I'm excited to tell you about it over the course of this mini series. Uh, the mini series after this intro video will have a full video on mean reversion of average and a full video on compression moving average. Those were both individually 30-minute videos when those indicators were released, and we have since added a bunch of features to both of them. So there's even more to go over. Uh, I'm going to have a full video on the settings, uh, the customizable band that's in ACAT, and then the, what the settings do for the V4 labels to try to interweave uh, this indicator's labels. Uh, it's a long settings menu, and it's spanning several pages, and uh, if I don't actually spend a whole video going over it, it's just going to be intimidating. I'm going to have 
a full video afterwards to describe high res ACAT. This is not an indicator and solution to this problem that actually just seamlessly scales to uh, doing higher resolution versions than already are plotted on this chart. So there are some uh, unique things to be aware of as far as possible artifacts uh, that you can get from that, but there are some pretty nifty things that high resolution ACAT can achieve. Um, there is one thing I want to make sure I just get up, for out, up front in the intro video, which are these abbreviations, because this is almost always the first point of confusion when someone sees this indicator for the first time. Uh, LOXP stands for Longest Overexpanded Period. Uh, this abbreviation kind of came organically out of our Discord, where uh, we've been talking about using the longest overexpanded period as long as shark charts have been a thing, and then some. Uh, eventually, people on our Discord started referring to it as LOXP uh, because it was much easier to type uh, a four letter acronym, and it just kind of caught on. So, for people who are new to the strategy framework, uh, this is a meaningless term that uh, doesn't exist elsewhere. We, we made it up with the help of our subscribers. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it's just an abbreviation for the longest overexpanded period. Uh, TLCP and CLCP are similarly four-letter abbreviations for uh, the two major types of things uh, bands that are shown from the compression MA side of this indicator. And we'll go over those more in the compression moving average video. Um, but for the purposes of being able to label the plots so you can set alerts and the abbreviations that are in the labels from version 4 PineScript, uh, it is very helpful to have just four-letter abbreviations. So you're just going to see these uh, throughout and you're going to hear me refer to these terms over and over again. So I just wanted to get that out of the way at the front. 